Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on using the Ultrabeat drum machine in Logic Pro 9. Today we're going to focus on the uh, just kind of the uh, beginning steps to step sequencing in the Ultrabeat. There's a lot going on in the Ultrabeat, uh, much more than I can possibly do in one video. So we're just going to focus in a, uh, focus in on step sequencing today. So the first thing you want to do is insert a software instrument, which I have. And uh, before I do anything, I'm going to save my project, go File, Save As. And the reason why I bring this up is there's an option down here that says Copy Ultrabeat Samples to Project Folder. You want to absolutely make sure you have this checked on. If you don't have it checked, what it means is that uh, the Ultrabeat is referencing the computer for samples. If you were to take your project to another computer and open it up, there's no guarantee that that computer is going to have the same set of samples that your computer had on it. So just make sure that you have this checked off anytime you're using the Ultrabeat, and you'll save yourself a lot of hassle uh, in the long run. All right, so I'm going to come down to my, uh, I'm going to click on my track and come down to my um, assignment or my uh, channel strip here. And in the I.O. section, I'm going to click and hold here. We're going to go down to Ultrabeat Drum Synth and do Stereo. Now, we can do a multi-output drum machine with, with Ultrabeat as well. Uh, but again, it's a little outside the scope of this video, so I'm not really going to uh, gonna go there uh, in this video. So I'm going to double-click on Ultrabeat. It opens up the Ultrabeat window. And uh, basically, you have three main areas to the Ultrabeat. You have the assignment section. This is where all of your sounds are, all your voices are. They're all mapped out to a keyboard right here on the left, this tiny little sliver of a keyboard. You have your synthesizer section, which we're not going to go over at all today. Um, and then we also have the uh, step sequencer. If you come down to the bottom right corner here, there's this full view button. And if you click on that, it shows the step sequencer. And the way a step sequencer works is you have these blue steps here, and they correspond to certain rhythmic values. Um, and they also trigger uh, instruments that they're horizontally aligned to. So all of these, um, these blue steps here that are in line with this kick one here are all going to trigger kick one. Likewise, all of these rim shots are going to tr be trigger uh, triggering that particular sample. So um, the first thing we want to do is uh, find a kit. This is the default kit. It's not particularly um, pleasant sounding. So I'm going to go up to the uh, menu up here and go to drum kits. And I'm going to use the electronic dub kit. It's an okay one. I'll show the full view again. And if you want to kind of audition some of the sounds in here, you can uh, click on the, um, the corresponding key for each one. Those are, those are better than the first one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and arm the track because I also want to be able to control this with my MIDI controller. Um, basically, this low C down here, this kick growl sample, can also be triggered by your... A MIDI controller, and that C there just happens to be C1. Now, again, in Logic, the mi uh, middle C is C3 by default, so this is two octaves lower than uh, middle C. So that was all uh, me controlling it with my MIDI controller. All right, so um, all you're going to find that all of these kits come with pre-made uh, sequences uh, like this one does here. If you want to play that sequence, you just turn the sequencer on and then you press play. Now the only thing I have to uh, forewarn is if you, you get in the habit of using the um, space bar here to play and stop, it's not just playing the sequence, it's also going to play your uh, project in the background. Now that can be cool if you're trying to audition a certain beat up here with your project in the background. Uh, but again, I would say most of the time when you're just trying to build a pattern up here, just press play and uh, click, oh, excuse me, click on play and click on stop. Don't use the space bar. So I'm going to click on play. And click it again to stop. All right, so maybe we don't like that pattern. We, maybe we want a pattern of our own. Uh, we can get, do a couple things to wipe this out. Um, you can click on each node and it'll disappear. Likewise, if you just click somewhere, it'll create a new node. But what we can do is uh, we can click on one of them and just kind of swipe down diagonally. And it'll get rid of all of the um, steps or nodes in that uh, session. Uh, what you can also do is you can come down to the 
uh, menu down here by the pattern button and this is a menu of all of the available sequences all of the ones that say SQ next to them have information sequenced to them the other ones are all blank so since I just wiped that first one it doesn't have SQ next to it anymore so we have 24 sequences and we also have uh, these um, octave identification numbers C negative 1 C 0 uh, G0, F sharp 0. Those are really, really low keys on your keyboard. You can actually trigger uh, each of these sequences or each one of these patterns uh, with a very low key on your keyboard. Now, generally, um, these notes are lower. Most of these notes are lower than an 88 key controller will go. So generally what people do is they will take maybe 1 through 8 and they'll map them to an MPC pad. So M the first MPC pad is actually triggering C negative 1, which doesn't play a note, but it play it triggers a sequence. So it's called key triggering. Uh, we're not really going to get into that in this video, but let's go up to sequence back to sequence 1 here. And I'm just going to build a basic kind of 4 on the floor type pattern. Um, I could go in and I could just type in these notes like so, uh, but an easier way, there's a couple shortcuts. If you right click, you can do add every upbeat or add every downbeat. So this is really helpful. And if you wanna wipe that whole line, you right click and you can just do clear. It doesn't clear the whole thing, it just clears the one line that you're on. So in order to clear the whole thing, you just have to swipe it out of the way. So this kick drum, I'm gonna right click and add every downbeat. So I'm pretty much on every quarter note. Um, and then I like this closed hi-hat up here. I'm going to add that every downbeat as well, and I'm going to add it every upbeat. So I have this sort of thing going on. Now the cool thing is that you can press play and you can compose as, the, uh, as this thing is looping. So if I want to press play, I can go in and add in snare drums and other things. I've built a pattern uh, that I may want to use in a song, and it's pretty decent. Um, the only thing that this you may be asking yourself is, how do I know what rhythm each one of these steps is, each one of these little blue steps is? Well, down on the bottom of this of the, the, the screen here, you'll see two options here. One that says resolution, and one that says length. The resolution is what the rhythmic value of each step is in comparison to your song. Um, so you can do 16th notes, 8th notes, and 32nd notes. So these are all dependent upon the tempo that you picked for your project. Right now my default tempo is 120. Uh, if you choose 1 12th, that's an 8th note triplet. A 24th note is a 16th note triplet. And you can also tell it how, how long you want the sequence to be. So you can double click on this. Maybe I want a shorter sequence. I can type in 16, but I'm okay with 32 right now. So the other thing we may want to do is we may want to drag this sequence down into our project so we can use it in the song. Well, down here in the bottom right corner, there's this little pattern button. We hover over it. It says drag to arrange window. Very simply, we just drag this down to the arrange window on our track. And there we go. We have a MIDI region that represents this particular sequence up here. The only thing I have to warn is that you, you're going to want to make sure to turn your sequencer off before closing this out and listening to this down here. The reason why you want to do that is if we don't turn the sequencer off, we'll hear both the region down here as well as the uh, sequence pl being played back in the ultra beat at the same time. So what would be doubling up the sound here, or if maybe we had another sequence here, another pattern here, the, the ultra beat can actually clash with what you have going on down here. And there we 
we go. We can loop this out. We can copy and paste it. We can edit it. Uh, we can open it up in the piano roll editor down here and change notes if we want as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to my ultra beat machine here. I'm going to click on this region and delete it. Uh, one thing I have to uh, make it very clear of is if I drag a sequence down here and then I change it up here, it will not change the sequence down in, in the MIDI region. You'll have to drag it down there again. All right, a couple other options I wanted to go over uh, was this uh, velocity and gait area. Um, these vertical beams control the uh, velocity of each note if you bring them up or down. So all the way up, 127, a very loud volume, down to one, very soft volume. You can also control the gait, which is um, how much of the sample plays back. So if you pull this all the way out, it's going to have a very uh, long sound that is if that particular sample is actually a long sample something like a kick drum may not necessarily have a a long sample to it, it may just have a very quick sample um if you pull it all the way in it, it only plays just a little bit of the sample so this is kind of a way to uh, make your samples play back more dynamically you can have a long sample and use just a little little bit of it and then at one point use the whole thing so you can do that um what i'm going to focus on is just the velocity i have a couple little quick 16th notes here that I want to make sound a little more natural. I'm going to pull those down. And the same thing is going to go for my hi-hat up here. Generally with hi-hat, um, uh, things that are on the downbeat tend to be accented more. Things off the downbeat tend to be a little bit uh, quieter. So these uh, notes that are, are that are off the downbeat, I'm going to pull down a little bit. And this will just make them sound a little more natural and a little, little less robotic sounding. So I'm going to pull that down. And the same thing goes for my kibasa here. I'm going to make every other one a little softer so it sounds a little more realistic. Uh, a couple other things you can do to make these a little more realistic. You can right click and you can do alter velocity or alter gate. And it'll basically just kind of randomize everything by a small factor just so everything's not on the same, uh, the same velocity. You can also right click and randomize. This is going to be like a hard randomization. Uh, you could have anything from very loud to very soft and everything in between. So I wouldn't recommend using that one. So here's my new sequence. Should sound a little more natural. We can also have uh, individual control of each sample over here. You'll notice that the samples that are being used say SQ next to them. Those are the actual sounds that are being used. Uh, maybe I want to hear more of my kick drum. Well, this blue bar represents the volume for each uh, instrument. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. My snare is a little loud. I'll pull that down. My hi-hat, I want to pull that down a little bit. Um, maybe my kibasa, I want to hear a little bit more of. We can also mute or solo either of these if you want to uh, just kind of audition one instrument. And you can also adjust the pan of each one. So maybe I want to hear my kibasa on the, uh, let's say, the right side. Oop, there we go, on the right side. And we want to hear the hi-hat just on the left side. You can do that as well. Um, one last thing you can do is you can apply swing, more or less swing, to your uh, project. If you want the eighth notes to swing, you can do that. And you can also highlight these up here, these little lights. All these do is they add emphasis on certain, um, certain uh, beats, and it'll emphasize all of the notes, all of the steps on that beat. And it's just a way to kind of accent certain... Um, certain rhythms, you know, maybe you have a kind of like a syncopated uh, rhythm that you want to accent on the and of four, you know, you can go in and you can um, click on that light and it'll automatically pull up the velocities on, on that beat, all of the velocities on that beat and accentuate uh, that particular rhythm. So now that I'm done with that, I can pull this down into the arrange window just like I did before. Turn off my sequencer. I can loop this out if I want to. I prefer not to work with loops because they can cause some MIDI editing problems. So usually when I loop something like this, I always right click and I go to uh, convert and then convert to real loops. And it converts them all into uh, uh, MIDI regions. And if you really want to commit to this, you can drag over all four of these and you can hit the merge button up in the toolbar. And this will... Uh, merge them together as one MIDI region. If you don't see the merge button up in the toolbar, you just right click, do customize toolbar, and you can find the merge button here and drag it into the toolbar up there. So, 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you.